She's not a sickle cell, you guys. Hello, people of Earth and elsewhere, and welcome to the Spam Show, where Crackers decides to over-explain a theory about her current favorite airing anime. I've talked extensively about what Cells at Work is about in other videos, and if you're here, you probably already know anyway, so let's just dive into the nitty-gritty. There's this theory floating around and passing itself off as fact, with no proper citation, that our main girl here, Red Blood Cell AE3803, is not a normal blood cell. Someone pointed out two things. The cowlick sticking up off of her head is crescent-shaped, you know, like how a lot of other anime characters are, and that she has a hard time finding her way throughout the body. Simple, right? Almost like, you know, regular character traits. Well, not if you're this show. Because of all the small details already existing in this series that can be pointed out as intentional design choices reminiscent of actual biological features, people have taken it upon themselves to try and identify things that haven't been pointed out yet. This series is just rife with opportunities for this, a theorist's playground as it were, but as this also implies, uh, some people will inevitably find things that aren't actually there. So, how much credibility does this theory have that 3803 Chan's cowlick is an indicator that she is, in fact, a sickle cell? None, really. And before you think I'm going to oversimplify things, there is currently no solid proof that this is true. If something comes up later and I need to correct myself, you can all revel in my wrongness. But until then, lend me your ears. First, so I sound like I know what I'm talking about, let's explain what sickle cells are. They are abnormally shaped and poorly functioning red blood cells that are caused by a mutation in their hemoglobin. Y'all know what hemoglobin is by now? It's a substance that gives red blood cells not only their red color, but also helps them bind as much oxygen to themselves as possible so that they can deliver it to the extremities of the body. Sickle cells have what's called estrate hemoglobin, which becomes stiff and misshapes the erythrocytes, most often stretching them into crescent or sickle shapes, causing them to burst. The afflicted red blood cells can no longer function. The stiff shapes don't move properly throughout the body and can't carry nearly as much oxygen, so they are effectively useless. En masse, these cells can cause serious problems for their host body, most notably bunching up in the blood vessels and, um, you know, disabling blood flow. That is, uh, clots. Clots that you don't need. But you see, this condition, known as sickle cell disease, is genetic, meaning it doesn't happen to everybody. Unlike cancer cells, which show up thousands of times a day in everybody and rarely manages to skirt the immune system to cause damage, Sickle cells only occur in people who have inherited the trait from both parents. Now, let's point out the meaning of genetic traits here. Rudimentary genetics lesson incoming. Y'all might remember this from high school biology. Insert Punnett square here. Here we have four squares and a series of letters. The little s's represent the sickle cell trait that can be inherited from either parent. The big s's, for the sake of this diagram, are no sickle cell trait. So... Two big S's are the odds of the trait not being passed on from either parents to their kid. A big S and a little s are the odds of the offspring inheriting the trait from one parent. And the two little S's together in the corner here means that both parents have passed on the trait to their child, and therefore the child has sickle cell disease. This is incredibly simplified, by the way. Please do not yell at me. Why do I feel the need to point this out? Because, of course, there are arguments involving whether or not the body that this show takes place in has some form of sickle cell disease, or just the trait. It does not, simply by virtue of the fact that 3803 is the only erythrocyte supposedly giving off indications of it. An individual with this form of anemia does not constantly display severe symptoms of it, but that doesn't mean that it's not always there after a certain point. Long story short, even for the number of blood cells we are shown, this little lady wouldn't be the only one in this entire body who is affected by this theorized disease. Even in the case of just us seeing bits and pieces of the body at once, at least one or two others will be present at any given time. A small smear of blood might only have one or two sickle cells in it, but they are there. And in a body with sickle cell disease, there are thousands to millions of them all the time just spread all the way throughout the body, and they're not always causing problems when they're all spread out and not bunching up on each other. 
But then what is called sickle cell crisis is when the body accidentally forms way more of these than it can handle, and anything from simple anemic symptoms to severe blood clots and pain happens. If it's not identified and handled, sickle cells can be the death of the person they exist in. So, going back to genetics, if anyone tries to say that this body only has the trait and not the disease itself and that's why she's the only one, they simply aren't understanding what that means. Someone with just the trait doesn't get sickle cells at all. They are just at risk of passing the trait on, or even the disease on to whatever offspring they may have. Having the trait will not give you sickle cells. Having the disease does. So what? At this point, people are probably thinking, well, you just kind of rambled on for a little while. That doesn't prove anything. This show isn't 100% accurate with the way it depicts everything. Well, that is true. You may as well just watch a documentary series on cells and circulation if you want to be completely accurate. But what fun would that be? Not getting off track here. It's true that perhaps cells at work may not be precise to that point, but it has always made it a point to keep the dangers to the body as close to accurate as possible. As I pointed out, sickle cell anemia is very, very dangerous. It is my firm belief that if such a serious condition were to exist in this body that the series takes place in, the mangaka would have done more with at least hinting at it. If we can play spot 4989 in the backgrounds all the time, it's more than likely that other lost cells with little idiot frizzes would be somewhat present as well. Or at least mentioned offhandedly to our main character in passing, like, Don't worry, it's not just you, this happens all the time, but it's really annoying. But again, she is the only one having these problems, and whether or not you want to believe it, that's just how she is written as a character. A ditzy character who needs to constantly find her way and learn about the body she exists in is the ideal proxy to teach the audience as well, at least concerning the functions that she sees around her. Along with that, her sheer determination in spite of lacking any sense of direction is endearing to the audience and makes it that much more fun to watch as she is constantly running into the same neutrophil. Remember, it's still a show trying to tell a story and has characters that more or less they try to develop within the parameters that it has set. Furthermore, this is a shonen series, so it's written for a younger demographic, even though it is very violent. Uh, so something like sickle cells and autoimmune disorders that could actually be the death of our main characters are unlikely to be covered in it. I'd say they're gonna have to leave that to the Black series. Or some other spin-off. Who knows? It's just highly unlikely that it's gonna happen in this one. On a final note, I'll just say that her inability to navigate without assistance is the only thing that this theory has going for it. While she may be prone to getting lost, she doesn't exhibit any other sickle cell characteristics as we see in the circulatory system episode. Other than some design choices to make her stand out a little from her peers, she's not abnormally formed, so to speak. I mean, if she were meant to stand out that much, there would probably be a change in her hat. I mean, headgear is really actually important in this series. Or maybe she would be too tall to fit through doorways. If she fits through even the smallest capillaries to do her job, as we can see here, she's kind of squishing the way that red blood cells are supposed to, and there are no signs whatsoever that she's particularly weak or carries any less oxygen, carbon dioxide, or nutrients than any of the other erythrocytes. So, in summary, she's not a sickle cell, you guys. She's just a main character. Now, if you want to argue that the Kalik is definitely supposed to be shaped like a sickle cell, you can. There's nothing I can say against that being something that the mangaka might have decided to add as just a little bonus, like, hey, it looks like a sickle cell, which also happens to have a hard time following the bloodstream properly. That's cool. It may very well be like that. But it also might not be the case and just be coincidental, unless I missed some note somewhere in my multiple rereadings of the manga. I am open to being corrected on that. However, it is in no way definitely indicated that this little detail to the red blood cell means that she is anything other than a normal functioning erythrocyte who just happens to have a hard time reading maps. She's as much a character as she is a part of the functions of the body, and she has to stand out to be a lead focus next to our actual main character, Neutrophil U1146. That's it. We're done here. I feel like a lot of people who put stock in this theory misread the statement that the Ahoge shape is just a cameo and thought that there was actually more to it. I've seen a lot of people referencing Mother's Basement's recent video about the show saying that's where they heard it, 
but on second viewing, Jeff only points out the possible Easter egg and never says that this means she is or is supposed to be a sickle cell. Yeah, it seems a simple misunderstanding is what's at fault here. But if Jeff isn't the one who spotted that little bit there or read too far into it, I'd still like to know where it came from because it seems to be spreading some misinformation. Probably inadvertently. Wait, he cited his source. I'll put that in the description and we can debate the meaning of the statement in the comments if you feel so inclined. See you down there. And that is all she wrote for this episode. Thank you to everybody who watched this video all the way through, and as usual, if you liked it, feel free to spread the love. Like, subscribe, ring the bell, because apparently you need to do that. Check out the description for the links to my art and Twitter, which is where I put all my mundane statements and random updates of Nerdist exploits. You are much more likely to get updates on my videos on Twitter than you are on YouTube, apparently. And with that, thanks again, people of Earth and Elsewhere. This is the channel of Spam with your friendly Crackers PSA, reminding you to take care of yourselves for your own sakes as well as the sakes of the little people who are just doing their jobs and trying to keep you alive. Hope to see you in the next one. Ciao! No, but imagine if the body did have sickle cells. Well, then we'd have a whole new set of problems, wouldn't we?